What's up guys, today I have a review of the Sapphire R7-260X graphics card. So let's begin with a quick look at the specifications. So the Sapphire R7-260X comes with 2GB of GDDR5 memory, 896 stream processors, it has a clock speed of 1050MHz and 6000MHz of effective memory. It also supports AMD Mantle and True Audio. It is Crossfire ready and you can set up iFinity with it with a resolution of 4K or you can even use 3D. The graphics card itself has a nice black or white scheme. It also is small and compact which makes it fit really easily in every case. It is only 7 inches long and 4.2 inches wide. You also have a lot of ports available. You will get one DVI, one HDMI and one DisplayPort. But you can also use the adapter that came with the box to use a VGA monitor. Let's now take a look at the actual performance of this GPU. You can find the specs of the PC where the Sapphire R7-260X has been tested with in the description down below. So I run a lot of games and benchmark with it, but let's begin with the results of the games. So every game that I ran was at high settings with no anti-aliasing at 1080p. So first off we have Battlefield 4, a very demanding game where we got an average frame rate of 46 frames per second. Metro Last Light is another demanding game where we got an average frame rate of 39.6 frames per second. With Crisis 3, we got an average frame rate of 48.5 frames per second. With Tomb Raider, we got an average frame rate of 53.8 frames per second. With Bioshock Infinite, we got an average frame rate of 61.3 frames per second. And now to the benchmarks. With the Unison Heaven benchmark, we got a minimum frame rate of 18 frames per second, a maximum frame rate of 43.1 frames per second, with an average frame rate of 30.5 frames per second. So overall, we got some impressive results for this budget GPU. Of course is the power consumption and temperature of this GPU very important. So I ran the Firmark benchmark which will stir the GPU to its maximum for around 15 minutes. I thought that this GPU was actually quite hot on full load. The highest temperature that the GPU reached was around 77 degrees celsius with stock speed. But also with gaming I found that the GPU was running very hot in a short amount of time. It's good that it's running below 80 degrees celsius but that is already 77 degrees celsius with stock speeds. It's just too hot. Because now when you want to overclock this GPU the temperature will increase above 80 degrees celsius. It is really unfortunate because this GPU overclocks quite well. However with just overclocking it a little bit you can get a little bit more performance with a temperature around 80 degrees celsius. But I found myself just running the GPU with its stock clock speeds. The amount of power the GPU was taking at full load was at its highest point 132 watts. So make sure you have good airflow in your case for the temperatures as well as a good power supply with enough watts to provide the graphics card all the power it needs. This GPU overclocks quite well but if you overclock this card the temperature will increase even more. For me it's just too hot, I like my graphics card to be running at around 65 degrees on stock speed and with overclocking max 75 to 80 degrees celsius, which I got with another graphics card that I have test. But you can overclock it a little bit to get a bit more performance out of it. As long as you overclock it with an acceptable increase of the clock speed, you won't run into any problems. But I recommend checking your temperatures every now and then to make sure that you don't get in the dangerous zone. So the Sapphire R7-260X comes with some impressive specifications and features at its price point. It's a great card for a budget PC build. The downside of this GPU is that it draws a lot of power and runs very hot compared to similar graphics cards with the same performance. But other than that it's still a great card which will give you good performance and is a good value for money and it runs very quiet too. Anyway thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to see the comparison between this GPU and the GTX 750 and I see you in the next video. So let's now move on to the announcement of the winner of the AMD giveaway. So before I announce the winner, I first want to say that if you didn't win, don't be disappointed because there are a lot more giveaways coming up, so you always have other chances of winning other products. So the winner of the giveaway is... Dayriba. 
Sorry if I didn't pronounce your name right, but you are the winner. Congratulations, you've won the giveaway. Send me a message on YouTube or a DM on Twitter so I can send you the code. If you don't respond in 24 hours, I will pick another winner. So make sure to send me a message in 24 hours from now. Anyway guys, thanks for entering the giveaway. There will be a lot more giveaways coming up with all kind of different products. So good luck next time and I will see you in the next video.